Good morning. It's time to give blessing and honor and glory to the Lord above. Amen. And I don't know about you, I don't just give thanks on Thanksgiving week. I'm thankful all the time. As you're coming in, if you're not standing already, stand up to your feet. Ready to bless Him, honor Him, adore Him. We bring in the sacrifice of praise. We lift Him up and then He's drawn to our worship. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, we give Him glory this morning.
Shout! 
Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. Can you just lift your hand today? Can you just begin to shout up towards heaven? You are good. You are good. You're a blessing to us. You are meat to our bones. You satisfy us, Father. You bless us going. You bless us coming. You make our baskets be full. Father, we give you glory. We bless you. We bless you. You gave up your son just for your people. We honor you today. There's nobody like Jesus. I wish I had some help in here. Give an honor and glory to the Lord. I wish I had some people that would lift up their voice. Come on. I said lift up your voice. We shout unto God because we are victorious. We are triumphant. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That means the earth is the Lord's and everything that's up in it. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Oh, yes. Say, you thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up. Say, you thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. So I could. Glad today. So you came and changed my life. Oh, you thought I was worth He thought of you and you and you. So you cleaned me up inside. He you said you I were to to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free. So I could be whole. So I could tell everyone. Come on, sing it loud. He thought I was saving, so you came and changed my life. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. So you, oh, he thought you were worth dying for. Yes, he did. He did it while he, he was who he was. See, the Bible says that he is the image of the invisible God. 
He is the firstborn among all creation, and everything was created by him and through him. Whether it was kingdoms or principalities or powers, whatever they were, they were created by him. And he holds everything together in him. Yet he thought I was worth dying for. Oh, come on. He thought I was worth saving. We thank you. See, there should be a thankfulness that is rising up in your spirit if it hasn't already. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. And you sacrificed so I could be. So I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could be free. Come on, receive it today. Receive it in your spirit this morning. So I could be free, so I could be whole, and I could tell everyone I know. Oh, we say, we thank you. Glorify the Lord. me so he cleaned me up he thought I was to die for and then he sacrificed his life so I could be free and I could be whole and I could tell everyone. Little Jerry, I thought about you. week and that's when I always fall sing and I just get to see my son's face and many of you when you sing that when you think about it or you're a loved one and you see how God has kept somebody when you think about David and how God kept him for 49 years and made sure he had his heart right before he took him. Come on. He's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn among all creation. Everything was created by him. Come on, whether kings or kingdoms, dominions, powers above. And he holds all of it together for us. You thought I was worth Come on, sing it for yourself. So you came. Thank you, Lord. Oh, 
yes, you thought I was. Come on and give him praise. Oh, yes, so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell everyone I know. You thought I was worth saving, so you came and changed my life. some help. I think some of y'all ate too much turkey. Come on, I said magnify the Holy One. Glorify the King of Kings. Lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, I get y'all to help me. Get in your microphone. Come on, we're thankful in this place. We bless you, Lord. We lift you up today. Father, you're good and there's nobody like you. You make the crooked way straight. You cause all things to work for our good. Hallelujah, you keep us. Your peace is stayed upon us, Father, as our mind is stayed on you. Hallelujah, we don't have to worry about anything. You care about the birds of the air and the, and the lilies in the field, and you sure care about us. Hallelujah, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How many of you know that the Lord is good? Hallelujah. We bless the Lord this morning. Good to have all of you. I know many people are still traveling. We were getting texts and messages today so they were going to try to pull it up and watch as they were heading back into town. And uh, we hope that you were able to do that. We just let you know that we miss you guys. We hope you have safe travels. Amen. Are you blessed and highly favored today? Well, that's good to know. God is good. Amen. Good to have all of you. If you're a guest with us, we welcome you as you take your seat this morning. If you want to just say good morning to somebody maybe that you haven't spoke to today, turn around, let someone know you're excited that they're here. All right. And uh, if you uh, are a guest with us, we know you came in, you received a guest packet. We're excited that you're here. You can look right there on the screen because that will give you a little direction on what to do next just so we can get in contact with you. And uh, so if you're a guest, if you would type uh, in that phone number and text the word welcome and then, then follow the prompts. And if you're not a guest and you say, I've been here for years, I don't think I have to do it. Yes, we need you to do it. And uh, we, this is a new system, and we get everybody in the system that way. So make sure if you haven't done it yet that you do that. But you would type the word family in your text. All right, guys, if you are taking notes and uh, for your calendar and all the things that are going on, we do not want you to miss out. I'm excited. A couple of things that we are getting involved with. One is called Silver Bells, and we, we have adopted three elderly people in the Catawba County uh, social services system and we're going to be blessing them they need uh, like undershirts and socks and different things like that blankets and so if you see somebody with a sign on their uh, on their necklace that says what can how can I help you then they can direct you to any of the leaders to let you know what they they need and um, or you can come and see me and uh, we're going to be blessing them. So if you uh, can get that this week, come and see me today. Also, as you know, we did a food drive for Bethlehem Elementary. And uh, so they were very blessed and very excited. And they sent us a wonderful thank you note. And I got a call from Webb Murray Elementary. And that is the school that we do the teacher life for. So I got a, a call. And so they have funding for their backpack program. As you know, Bethlehem Elementary lost theirs, but they have funding for it. But they do not send food home 
for the holidays. And so a, a lady actually does it herself and uh, she's in the neighborhood. She's an elderly woman and she calls and she gets donations because she likes to send these children home because they're gonna be home about 10 days and they normally get food from the school and they eat lunch, free lunch at school. And some of them, you know, we just don't know what their situation is and how bad it is that they may not have food for the holidays. And so all the things that we brought in before, uh, peanut butter, sugar, mac and cheese, cereal, soup, applesauce, jello, those kind of things, if you will begin to bring those in, we want those, we're ready to give to the school to hand out when they leave for Christmas break, which is December 19th. And uh, so if you could do that, that would be awesome. Don't forget this Saturday, Scarlet Thread Conference tickets are available in the foyer. Uh, make sure you let us know that you're coming and you get your ticket today. December 9th is our pastor appreciation service. Our angel tree, this is the last Sunday to sign up, so you have to see me after service. And uh, we are excited. We have some ministry opportunities. How many of you have ever seen a paper in front of you on that table that says, uh, has all these different ways that you can volunteer here at the church? How many of you don't really do, don't raise your hand, don't tell on yourself. How many of you don't do any type of ministry in his house? Get involved somewhere. Your hand should be at the plow in the field. That means you should be working here doing something. Everybody can do something. There's many people who do multiple things, but everyone should do something. But there is a volunteer paper right there on your desk. If you don't see one, we can get you one if you want to lift your hand up. Um, but we are excited because there's some opportunity for you to help serve in our media department, whether that's run a camera or be in the back with some of our p computer equipment. But we need some help in that department today. And if you can do that, if you let us know, and you can put that slip of paper in with your tithe so speaking of tithe it is time amen it's time to honor the Lord you have to understand this is still a part of our worship this is a part of our worship we honor the Lord with our giving we honor the Lord and I was thinking about today and I was thinking about tithe and I said to my the first thing that came to my mind was thanks to God be give thanks to the Lord for he is good if somebody is good to you they make sure that you don't lack for nothing did you hear what I said when somebody is good to you that means you are taken care of and that's what the scripture says thanks be to God he is good thanks to the Lord because he is good and he is and he will supply all of our needs amen when we are faithful there well, what is a tithe the tithe is a tenth of our increase it says it belongs to the Lord it doesn't actually belong to us if we keep it we are robbing God and your offering your gift you bring to him is your sacrifice it's not equal for everybody some sacrifices five, some sacrifices 500. But we bring to the Lord what is His and we bless Him and we honor Him. Amen. There's envelopes right there on your table. You can use one or both. Just ask that you put your full name and the amount. We appreciate it. Are you ready to give thanks to the Lord? Amen. Go ahead, guys.
here at the Favor Life Church, we stand together. We get in agreement with one another. We proclaim God's word for one another. Amen. We, we defend the word of the Lord and we stand up strong and we rebuke the enemy along with our Father who's doing that for, on our behalf when we bring in the tithe. Father, we thank you. We stand against the, sh the man that comes against our finances. We just speak the word, Lord. We know that you can do all things. Nothing is too hard for you. You are able and you are willing. We give glory to you. We thank you, Father, for blessing us. We thank you for increasing us so that we can increase your house, God, so we can spread your name, Lord, so we can lift you high above and the people of the world can see the blessing of the Most High God. We thank you. We give you all the glory. And everybody said amen. Hug four or five people, tell them I love you. Hug four or five people, tell them I love you. So glad you're here. I want to welcome all those watching by way of the internet. Those watching. By Roku. Those watching by Facebook Live, Periscope. So good to have you on. Our iChurch, if you're watching replay, we thank you. Hallelujah. Well, look at somebody and say, get ready for victory. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Turn your Bibles to Numbers chapter 33. Numbers chapter 33. chapter 33. When you get there, look at somebody and say, Amen. I like a quote I read. I, I, I have this thing in my, uh, I document everything, and I have this right here, this Surface Pro. It's got about 5,000 messages on it. And I wrote down 15 quotes from George Patton. 15 quotes, and one of the quotes I like, it says, I'm a soldier. I fight where I'm told to fight, and I win where I fight. I like that. You should write that down. I am a soldier. You're a soldier in the armies of God, right? So I fight where I'm told to fight, and I win where I fight. Amen. I want you to go to Numbers 33. I want to continue our teaching. We're talking about telling the enemy I've changed my mind. We're coming up to the end. Of, I think we've got 30 days uh, left in the, this year or, or to Christmas, a month and a week, and we're in a new year, and 2018 will be behind us. 2019 is going to be a door opening up in front of us. I believe it's going to be, I'm going to be teaching a little bit about what 2019 and what those numbers mean here in the next few weeks. Uh, but you've been through some things in 2018, haven't you? been through some losses, uh, you've been through some crises, you've had some financial battles, uh, but I believe if you'll repent and find the areas, you know, everything about my life, anytime, my mentor taught me, anytime you see loss or lack in your life, you need to first make sure it wasn't predicated on a decision you made. As long as I can figure out if I'm in a financial problem and I didn't tithe, then guess what? It wasn't the devil, it was me. If I can't trust God with the tenth, how can I believe him for the ninety, right? But, but I can repent. Repentance is not a curse to the kingdom of God. It's a gift. You know what it's a gift of? It's a gift to admit, okay, I failed here, God. I messed up here. I, I made a wrong decision. And repentance is God's mercy on your life to recognize it so God don't keep judging you for it. And you can enter 2019 pure and whole. Amen? So we'll talk about that. Well, we're talking about possessing. We're talking about success. I'm excited next, I think next Sunday at 9 a.m. is going to be our first introduction to our 9 to 10 a.m. class. I'm calling it Entrepreneur Church. But if you want to take, possess, and increase, you're going to have to take, the, you, you want to be in this class. And then you're going to sign up, and we're going to do a 12-week uh, Favor Life Academy. Favor Life Academy. If you have financial problems,
problems, you need to be in this class. If you want more money, if you want to be a better business person or woman, you need to be in this, in this academy. Numbers 33, verse 50. Now the Lord spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan across. Remember, where, remember all these scriptures I'm bringing you is taking you right back to where we've been. There's seven enemies. There's three tactics. They're going to they're gonna go. The promise was this territory. And every time you see God talking to them, he's keeping the same uh, theme. So now here's a whole different passage. So when you get to the plains of, at Mo, from Jericho saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when you have crossed the Jordan into the land of Canaan, he said, when you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, I'm in Numbers 33.50, Numbers 33.50. Go to 52. So you speak to the children of Israel, saying to them, when you have crossed the Jordan, so what have you done? You've crossed the Jordan. Then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Destroy all their engraved stones. Destroy all their molded images. That word molded images in the, in the Hebrew is all their pictures. Don't even keep their pictures. Destroy all their pictures. Demolish all of their high places. All of their wor- stones of worship, their worship places. You, you shall dispose the inhabitants of the land and dwell in it. For I have given you the land to what? To possess. And you shall divide the land by lots as an inheritance among your family. So the larger you shall give a larger inheritance, and to the smaller you will give a smaller inheritance. Don't tell me that God doesn't divide things according to your ability and your management. That equal thing, everybody deserves equal, is not scriptural. That's here, right here. God said, if they're small, give them small. If they're large, give them large, okay? And to the smaller, you give a smaller inheritance. There, everyone's inheritance shall be whatever falls to him by lot. You shall inherit according to the tribes of your fathers. Now, here it gets interesting. 55 is my text. But if you do not drive out, notice this, if you do not drive out, if you do not drive out the inhabitants. So guess what? You can choose to leave enemies in your house. God didn't drive them out. God gave you a promise. God's given you a word. God's given you ability and power, but he will not do the work for you. Write it down. He will not do the work for you. He will not fix you. He saved you. You got to get do the work to fixing things. He said, if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then guess what? Then it shall be that those whom you let remain, who let remain? You. Tell four or five people, we're talking to you. You only told two people. I said four or five people. You, you, go ahead. We we, we talk amongst ourselves. It's your chance to talk to somebody and tell them, you know, you're irritated with them, so look at them. He's talking about you. You know you don't like everybody. If you do not drive out the inhabitants of a land from before you, then you shall, then it shall be that those whom you let, whom you let remain, they shall be irritants in your eyes, thorns in your side, irritants in your eye, thorns in your side. Look at this. And they shall harass you in the land where you dwell. So, God's telling us that the reason we're being harassed and we have irritants and the reason we got thorns around us is not because of the devil who's attacking us but our unwillingness to get everything that's not divine and promised out of our lives. 
And so we have to understand that God has a formula. He has a sequence. We have to understand how God works. We have to understand that God is not a welfare God. God, he said, I'll, I'll give you the land. I will do it with you. So we have to understand that God is with you. God is working with you. He's not working for you. Okay? He didn't say it would be easy. He didn't say it would be, he, listen, he didn't say that when you do what I'm telling you to do, you're going to always feel good about doing it. He didn't say that. He didn't say you're always going to have uh, feel uh, uh, um, overwhelmed. Yes, you will feel overwhelmed, but you're not going to always feel joyous. You're not always going to feel good about it. And it's going to probably stretch you in areas you don't want to be stretched. Amen? It's good to see Melissa down here. I kept looking at you going, well, you look so familiar to me. Because <laughs> I'm thinking you're in Pittsburgh. So I'm thinking, does she got a sister? <laughs> so good to have stand up let everybody see you. This is Melissa Avery. She's one of our favorite nation members. Stand up real quick. Let everybody see you. And she's up at Pastor Nick's church. She, she didn't like my teaching, so she left. She didn't like me, but I said she left. She left me cold and dry. <laughs> Fabricated. I'm good at that. So, you've been under battle. You've been under loss. You've been under attack. You're rebuking the devil, and the devil's not even attacking you. Some of you have been rebuking lack and poverty and you've been saying, devil of lack, get out of my house. And the devil ain't even been on your front lawn. Because there's things that are around me that I have chose to let remain within me. Greatest thing you can do is give mercy where God hasn't given it. The, great, the, the most dangerous thing you can do is to try to rewrite the, the, the Word of God to fit your situation. Okay? So last week I told you there were three tactics of the enemy. Does it change? You remember the three tactics? Number one, the three tactics of the enemy. Number one was to hinder and block. Okay? Hinder and block. He can't stop the plan, so he's going to get you to do something. So number two, I told you that the, the third, second tactic was Sheshia, I won't, you have to go back and watch it to get the uh, Hebrew names, but these are the three sons of Anak, was to whitewash the truth or water down, water down the truth, so water down truth. I told you that, right? That's where you become religious. That's religious. You water down the truth. You only want the truth that, that works for you. You don't want the truth that changes you. That's water down truth. Write it down. You only want the truth that works for you. You don't want the truth that that, that changes you. Anything that works against you is probably good for you, okay? It's building your muscle, right? These are tactics. Satan can't stop the blessing, but he can block the blessing. He can't stop what God's doing, but he can hinder you from receiving what God's already done for your life, okay? So the problem's not the enemy. The problem is not on God's side. Who is the problem with? Us. So then he waters down truth. We're seeing this right now. If you read Matthew, you should go and read Matthew 25, Matthew 24, and you will see. You should go read Matthew 24 because Jesus said in the last days, uh, this is what you're going to see, and this, this spirit right here uh, of uh, Sheshia is going to be crazy because this spirit is watered down truth, only broken sentences. That's why you don't want to watch the news and you don't want to take the news as fact. Why? Because they're sound bites. You don't get the content, you get a sound bite. The sound bite's not truth. That's why you can't take one verse out of the Bible and try to make a doctrine to it. That's why Paul said line upon line, precept on precept, here a little, there a little, shall the word of God be rightly divided. You can't take the part of the Bible you like and leave the part you need out. Let me tell you something about people. Say He's talking about us right now, people. You're always going to choose what you want and miss what you need. I don't care who you think you are. You're always going to choose what you want, and you're going to walk away from what you need. Do you need to hear this watered-down truth? What are you talking about? Well, they wanted Barabbas. They needed Jesus. 
They wanted, they wanted the tree of knowledge. They needed the presence of God. If you go through the Bible, you will see they, they needed David. They chose Saul. You cannot trust your choices outside of the wisdom of God. Please write it down. I cannot trust my decision outside the wisdom of God. I will choose what my flesh desires and give up what my spirit needed. We do it. We've all done it. We're all guilty of it. And so this watered down truth, Matthew 25 Matthew 24, they said, what would the end be? What shall be the sign of thy coming? And Jesus goes all the way into the 21st century, and he starts talking. Well, let me tell you something. The nation will rise against nation. That's not, uh, that, if you go look that up in the Greek, it didn't say Israel fighting other nations or other nations. It talked about within the nations, uh, there'll be ethnicity, division, and war. And more have you heard about racism than you hear now in the 20th. We are sitting in Matthew 24 in, in in this world nation ethnicity downing ethnicity people will start gravitating to their ethnic culture and move out of the kingdom of God you don't want to hear it, but it's the truth he said nation arise against nation he said he said kingdom against kingdom well, that's not, we don't have kingdom. What's he talking about? He's talking about you will divide your powers amongst each other. But this is where he gets. He said, but that's not the end. Those are the signs of my coming. But what shall the end be? He said, in that day, many shall be offended. Offended. Okay, this is all here, watered down truth. Offended. And look, and be deceived. Then he said, this is Matthew 24. Do I need to turn there? Can you trust me in quoting it? Then he said, because iniquity will abound, the love of many will wax cold. Okay? So we know that he said, this will be the last day. Offense and iniquities. Now, when you see the word iniquities, I don't know if I spelled it right, but you can. You see the word iniquities here. That word iniquities in Matthew 24, that word iniquities in Matthew 24 is not sin. See, that's where, that's where we're, we're in English translations. And I, just so I can keep you uh, saved, I'll, I'll show it to you. Just so you'll see it, I'll read it to you. And it's just a side trail, but you need to know it to know the full trail. Okay. You want to be able to eat the, the fried turkey? You got to know this. And then many will be offended, verse 10, and will betray one another. So we know that when there's an offense, there's a betrayal. Okay? Betrayal. We're going to betray one another. I see this happening right now. We see churches dividing over partisan. That's ridiculous. Do you know people have left? I have friends who have multicultural churches and said that, their churches divided, and people got up and left their church. Watch this, because they found out they were Republicans. And then Republicans left some churches because they found out they were Democrats. But you shouldn't be neither. Why? Because you're in the kingdom. You're above American. You're a kingdom. You vote what's right, not partisan, but what's right. So he said, look. Offended, will portray one another and will hate one another. I know that two things offenses bring portrayal and hate. But then he said, then many false prophets shall rise up. You know why false prophets are coming? Because now everybody wants to get their own news channel. That's all. I can break it down. Everybody wants their own news channel. That's why false prophets, everybody wants to hear their own prophecies. You don't want to hear what God's saying. You just want somebody to say what you're doing is okay. I'm trying to help you fight an enemy. You don't want nobody to rebuke you. You just want everybody to comfort you. Guess what? Somebody needs to rebuke you. 
He said, many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And it has happened now. It happened so much broken down. The Republicans watch Fox. The Democrats watch CNN. You don't got all, see, we don't find what, what makes us feel good and never fact check any of it. Here's what's sad. You will take the word of a reporter on CNN, CNN, yet you will fact check every preacher that tries to preach you the truth. Can't drink with a cap on it. That's how some of you praise today. You tried to praise with a cap on it. Yeah, I watch you. All you got was plastic to your mouth. You couldn't get the water in your spirit because you didn't know how to uncap your praise. Tell us four or five people say, uncap your praise. Look at two or three people and says, your ignorance is concerning us right now. Or you want me to make it clear? Your stupid's got me nervous. You didn't look at nobody. Look at somebody and say, your stupid's got me nervous. If you're married to it, you ought to put an exclamation on it. If it's your wife talking to your husband, husbands, you better shut your mouth. That's what he said. False prophets will rise up, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. See that word lawlessness is iniquity in King James. Now, 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 now here's, here's what it says in the Greek. You will rewrite laws for your own sins. This is what Jesus said. How you know it's the last days? The laws will not be important. Do you know I heard, I sit and listen to people interviewing people at college campuses who are going to be our next leaders, okay? And they, and, and they ask them questions they should know, okay? And this person says, well, if I was the president, I would take down all the laws and tell people, write your own laws. So then we'll all get along. Really? That's like asking two married couple, a married couple to figure out what they're going to do on date night. I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. Well, let's go to Fuddruckers. Now, nah, I don't want to go to Fuddruckers. I just said you didn't care. Well, I do. I don't want Fuddruckers. That, that don't happen to you in, in relationship. You want pizza? Nah. Mexican? Nah. Asian? Nah. What do you want? It don't matter. <laughs> Hamburger? Nah. Chicken? Nah. Teriyaki? Nah. What do you want? I don't know. It don't matter. That's how y'all live in your walk with Christ. I know, I'm just letting it stew a little bit. Because you know, with soup that stews is good. It, it, it's, it's spaghetti better the next day when it's set up all day long. You know why? It's stewed a little bit. Some of you eat too fast. You get spiritual indigestion. You need to let that settle a little bit. Chew on it. Chew on this. Lawlessness. The Bible said where the innocent blood is spilt, the generation shall be judged. I started thinking about abortion. Now, if you had an abortion, I want to talk to you for a second. If you had an abortion, you could be forgiven of this. So I don't want any person hear me right now thinks that God has cut you off because you made a decision. Because you made a decision that affected you in a life but those who write the laws of abortion, now you got serious infractions. See, but you don't want to talk about that because to talk about that now we have to divide this into partisan. No, I'm talking about the Word of God. So let's move on before, before you vote me off the pulpit. Verse 13. So he says, offenses 
the, the word offense here is very important. It means holding on to yesterday's bitterness. This word offense said many will be offended. He would have said many will not overcome yesterday's wounds. Somebody sitting here right now cannot overcome something they lost months ago. They can't overcome. They lost something, a car, a loved one, a house, money, a business, health. Okay? And you can't get in your faith right now because you're still angry over what happened to you yesterday. That's offense. Offense is you can't get over who hurt you or what hurt you or what's got you messed up so that you can forgive yesterday and embrace the grace and mercy of God today so you can have something in your life tomorrow. Many will be offended. What is offense? It's bitterness. Bitterness is the poison you swallowed waiting for someone else to pay who hurt you. That's all bitterness is. And it don't have to be a person. It could be a circumstance, a situation. Some of you think you're not bitter, but you're bitter. You're bitter when you see that certain person in the store and it bothers you. That's bitterness. If you drive into the neighborhood of where you used to live and it bothers you, you're still offended by what happened that you're not there. Well, you're not living for today. You're still living on regret. God didn't build you to carry regret. He built you to carry faith. Oh, hallelujah. I'm trying to help somebody, but you looking at me like you ain't wanting to be helped. It's easy. It's easy. The easiest life to live is to carry yesterday's wound. The hardest life to live is to let it go and give faith for your tomorrow. And say it was bad, but that way's better. And I, I didn't like it, but I overcame it. I survived it. I got there's some battles you don't win, you just get through. Somebody shout glory to God. Right here, shout glory to God. Look at somebody say, I didn't win, but I got through it. Hallelujah. I didn't win it, but I got through it. Yesterday was rivalry weekend. Your state played your, you know, South Carolina played Clinton, right? Everybody, right? Guess what? Some of you won, some of you lost. Your team, right? Well, I was listening to them talk. I didn't have the experience of the loss this year. We won. And we won good. So good that I gave a crimson praise. Talking about Jesus. But last year, we lost. Okay? But I was listening to the player, and they said, so what does it feel like having a victory? He said, well, it was just good for the seniors. It's, I'm, I'm just glad for all the seniors. And they said, well, why are you glad for the seniors? Well, it's their last year. Whatever the outcome was in this game, Watch it. It will live with them for the rest of their career. Why? And I, so I sat there and listened to it, and here's what the Holy Spirit said to me. He said, see, if, if, if they weren't seniors, then they would say to themselves, forget it, we got next year. But they don't have no more next year. This was their last year. So now they can't look forward to getting better. Whatever they did is done. Now either they got to forget it and get on or they're going to carry it with them their whole life. And that's just a football game. But that's how life is. As long as you think you got another chance, you can rewrite the script of yesterday. I am trying to help some Randy, I am trying to help people. But I don't think they're getting it today. Y'all got too much dumpling and too much dressing up in you right now. Uh, 
and cranberry sauce. I ate, I wore sweatpants. <laughs> Forget all them jeans. I wore sweatpants. And I'm going to be honest with you, I sinned. I sinned. I sinned so bad, I sinned all day. It's so bad, my stomach said no more. My mind said more. <laughs> the pleasure of pecan pie with the right crunch. Wash that down with some slutty brownies. This side really upset over them slutty brownies. That side don't even know what I'm talking about. Is that or y'all are so sinful, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, man, ain't nothing like slutty brownies. Let me tell you something about them kind of brownies. You first start out with the blonde looking. It's that, that light blonde brownie. Then you put it, this, this, this one had a white layer of cream. Then some good dark, ain't nothing like dark brownie with them, you know, it's a little multicultural dessert there. Top that thing off with some caramel, some nuts. You slap three people with a glass of gold. You get a cold glass of milk. Or put it in the microwave with some, and then put some vanilla ice cream on it. Somebody say, shut your mouth. <laughs> say, shut your mouth. I look at some of you like this. You're trying to lick the air. It ain't right there. That's fantasy. You come to my house. I got a half a pan of it. It's called reality. I laid hands on it before I went out. I said, I'll be back. <laughs> Apple pie. Table was full. Green bean casserole. I had a carb overload. Well, that's why some of y'all, y'all act like y'all carb overload right now, yeah. This offense and this iniquity is, is how they end. But verse 13, he said, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. So you got to know something on verse 13. You ain't saved just because you got saved. According to Jesus, you ain't saved unless you've endured. Wait a minute. Let me, let me look this up. Verse 13, but he who endures... To the end shall be saved. And this is the gospel of the kingdom. And it will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. Then shall the end come. Not church gospel, what gospel? So then I told you number three, tomorrow was to accumulate. Tomorrow was to accumulate. Was to accumulate. You know what this means, accumulate? It means materialism or humanism. It means prosperity. Well, let me, let me put it this way. It means prosperity without conviction. You know what this means? It means some of you, God can't let prosper because if he gave you more, you would do less. Let me, let me, let me say it again. This, this spirit right here, if God gave you more, you would do less. Whatever your hands find to do, do with all your might. See, you think God's impressed with you at work. He's not impressed with you at work. You, you, first of all, God does not bless you because you go to work. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's going to really irritate you, and I hope it just irritates the fire out of you. You are not blessing God when you go to your job tomorrow. You are not going to your job tomorrow or to your business for God. God don't need you to work to take care of him. 
No, you go to your job tomorrow to take care of you. So you think, well, I work every day. That's the work of your hand for you. That's your accumulation. Show me what your hand is doing for him. That's your ministry. Show me in his body how you fit. How do you fit in his body? Well, I don't have time. That's about you. Show me in, well, Bishop, why do you always come back to this point? I was feeling good. Because until you understand it, God's not going to give you true riches. If I can't trust you with mammon, which is accumulation of money, how am I going to trust you with true riches? Well, what's true riches? Being bigger than money. Somebody look at somebody and say, I want to be wealthier than money. Tell four or five people, I want you wealthier than money. Prophesy to them, all right? I want to prophesy. I prophesy 2019 is the year where you're wealthier than money. I prophesy your welfare. You're going to have land. You're going to have businesses. So you got, you got to think bigger. You got to territorialize. So now he says, when you get to this land, these are three tactics. Here's seven enemies. He said, you got seven enemies who are going to use three tactics. And then in Numbers 33, he tells you three sequences. So he says, when you get to land, he said, number one, you got to take it. Are you willing to take it? He said, you got to take it. Say, say, take it. Easiest part of this equation of salvation is to take it. You're takers. Look at somebody say, you're a taker. I'm a taker. Taking it, here's something you need to know. Joe, you probably never heard this, but listen to this. Taking it don't mean you possess it. So he said in Numbers, in Numbers 33, he said, take the land. Take it. Number two, he said, divide it. Divide it, which means manage Manage it. Can you manage what you took? Well, I pray well. I didn't say to you. Prayer, prayer places you in the presence of God. Faith places God's presence in you. But wisdom places God's activity with you. And I'm telling y'all, y'all know how to pray, but your prayer ain't nothing more than riding around crying about what you didn't get or what you lost. Your prayer is more about, I'm hurt. Help my kids. Touch my kids. Save my kids. Heal my kids. Touch my mind. Heal my body. Heal my back. Heal my marriage. That's all. I mean, that's what prayer is. Then it's like, now, Lord, speak to me. Speak to me. Speak to me. He said, my God, I, got, I give you 1,189 chapters. You ain't read one of them. I spoke every day. I spoke the word. It's forever settled in heaven. He said, you want a word from my mouth, you can't take the word I wrote down on paper. No, you, want, you, you, you still want it easy. You want to work it in your benefit. You don't want to take time to read. You don't want to take time to learn. You don't want to take time to listen. You don't want to get the kids ready and take them to church. You don't want to do anything that's inconvenient to you because you are still living in tomorrow. It's all about accumulation for you. But if I can't trust you with that, mammon, success, the, the, my, 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 the Tua Tagabola quarterback for Alabama, got to talk about it, can't help it, he's a Christian. I like reporters because the reporters don't, exp don't know the answer. And the lady says to him, so, Tua, yeah. Half of the national championship last year, they pulled you in the game, and you threw that pass. What does it feel like to be that lucky? And he said, luck? Wasn't luck. 
she said, what? Watch me say, God has been preparing me my whole life for that moment. She's like, I, I, the world don't know how to, how to come back with that one. God has been preparing me my whole life. To trust me in that moment. And in that moment, I gave him the glory. <laughs> I done learned. My daddy done taught me. When I succeed, it's because of him. And I'm a winner because of him. And now I won't give him his rightful praise. I am what I am and did what I did because he prepared me to do it. He ain't nothing but a modern day David. They asked him, they said, what made you choose Alabama? What made you pick the University of Alabama? I know you had many letters. He said, oh, I had a lot of letters. He said, what? well, did you read them? No, I didn't read them. You didn't read them? No, why? My, I, I didn't choose Alabama. You didn't choose Alabama? No, my daddy did. He said, you mean your daddy chose Alabama? He said, yeah, in the Samoan culture, we don't make the major decisions our parents do. We put that burden on them. And they said, so you didn't, if you didn't want to go, he said it, has, it wasn't a decision of want. It was a decision, decision, do I trust my father? That's natural talking kingdom vernacular. I'm not going to argue with my father. I trust his decision. So I showed up at Alabama, and when I tried to quit because it was too hard, my daddy told me, no, you get your butt back over there and line up. So now he's the national talk of television, and he's giving God the glory. Why? He's working kingdom principles. Why can't you? I tell you why. You're still Baptist. You're still Methodist. You're still Lutheran. You're still similar to God. You're not kingdom. High five somebody, and if they look dead beside you, slap them in the face, say, wake up. High five somebody. High five. Who wants to high five me? Slap somebody, say, wake up. If you can sleep during my preaching, you're the Antichrist. He said, take it. Easy. Go to work and take it. That's some of you $5 an hour, but you're taking it. Problem is you can't manage it. He said divide it. Whenever you take it, what must you do with it? Divide it. Go look this up. He said whatever I give you, you better start taking some of it off of it and put it in its proper place. Now, you know where I'm going with this? You might as well check it out right now. You can't divide it if you can't take the tithe off the top of it. Manage it. Manage it. Tithe. Why? Because you, when you tithe, do you realize... When you, when I talk about tithe, and you hear the word tithe, tithe means tenth. Don't be stupid. Somebody come and said, God told me to give twenty percent tithe. I said, first of all, that God ain't that stupid. God wouldn't tell you to give twenty percent tithe. Twenty percent is not tithe. Twenty percent is twenty percent. Tithe is ten percent. Oh. Second of all, God wouldn't tell you to double your tithe because the tithe is a tenth of what he increased you in. The tithe is nothing more 
than you bringing back a ten, a dime of everything you got. It's a ten percent. It's not a Levitical law. The tithe of the of the Arianic priesthood. That tithe does not fit you. It's not Gentile. It doesn't fit you. It's the Jewish culture. Your tithe is based on the father of faith, Abraham. Your tithe is that you don't, you don't see Abram tithe until he went to war. He went to war. He was already rich. He was already blessed, but he hadn't increased. He goes to fight Sodom, which means Satan. Sodom, which means a system of Satan. He got rewarded in a system, and God gave him the victory. On the way back from the tithe, that means he was coming back with the victory, Melchizedek come down out of the high place, and said, I see you've got increase. He said, who are you? I'm Melchizedek. Who's Melchizedek? I'm the priest of the Most High God. He said, I serve that God. Didn't know he had priests. Hang on a minute. What? He took a tithe. He said, here, I don't even want to talk to you until I do what's right. Here's the tithe off of what the Most High God did for me. Now, you can't go to God over blessing if you've robbed him of his honor. Well, Bishop, you don't get it. If we took the, we make $1,000 a week, we take a 100 of that dollars. That $100 is needed to keep the power on. Well, you kept Duke power on, but you lost God's power in doing it. I'd rather sit in the dark not having Duke knowing I got God in the dark because God can do supernaturally what Duke Power because Duke Power got to come to your house and turn the switch. God got to send the word and turn the enemy about. And then you in the your sick, your son or daughter gets sick and you over there by the bed going, Lord, I speak healing in the dark. No, you got the light on in the heat because you robbed the tithe. Lord, I ask you to heal my son and my daughter. And he says, no, I'm not healing them. You've dishonored me. Well, that's just, that's just unmerciful. It's not unmerciful for me to bless you in your disobedience. See, you want to put the blame on God. You want to blame God. It's God's fault. God didn't come through. No, you didn't do what you're supposed to. It ain't got nothing to do with God. It's got you to repent and get your div your divisions right. You know why you're not multiplying? Because you ain't dividing right. I'm trying to help you. Math 101, you want to multiply in the presence of God? Start dividing yourself correctly. Divide your time correctly. Divide your money correctly. Now, don't drive up here in a brand new car and say, look what God gave me. And you're paying $685 a month for it. God didn't give you jack. And then I ask you, what's your interest rate? Oh, eight and a half percent. Don't come over here and tell me, look what God gave me. And you buy here, pay here, 18 percent. And then tell me the devil, the, why can't you come to church? The devil took my car. The devil didn't take your car. Repo man took your car. You didn't divide right. We were in Malaysia. Is this all right? Can I talk like this? Ron, can I talk like this? I'm going to talk like this. Fire me tomorrow. Can't be fired today. It's Sabbath. Can't fire nobody on Sabbath. Can't fire me if you want to. But listen, I'm in Malaysia, and I'm all over, and I paid money to get there. It cost me $10,000 to go to Malaysia. They paid for Everything, hotel, food. They, they paid for my airfare, but it was coach. Well, I ain't flying coach 12, 24 hours, whatever. The devil is a lie. 
I couldn't preach Jesus by the time I got there I would whoop five people you ain't sitting up like this call myself royal and then somebody said well if you were uh, if you understood that poor need that money I said the poor can't get delivered if I'm irritated so I had to upgrade my ticket I didn't tell them I just did it but then I brought my son with me and they didn't pay for a travel assistant I had to pay when I landed I was in ten thousand dollars and I went through working and I worked Jerry is he in here did we work morning, noon, and night? There wasn't no rest. I ain't, I ain't on vacation. I'm working the kingdom. I'm in businesses. I'm in uh, a lawyer's, uh, the only maritime lawyer in Malaysia. God was, I sat at a boardroom with a, with a lawyer and my friend that hosted me, my son and me, and I spent an hour talking to a maritime lawyer who's a Jew and a Christian in a Muslim country, and I said, I just went there to visit him, gave him a book, just said, I just want to bring you a word, a, a, a prophetic word over your business. He goes, don't leave, sit right here. He goes over in his safe, comes out with a wad full of money. Didn't ask for no offering, but said, I couldn't take what you're saying without putting something in the man of God's hand and give me a thousand dollars then they're buying books Muslims were buying my books and hiding them look we had a money bag full of about 40 50 thousand ringgit of their money which is going on the deficit of the ten thousand and we're in a business and an evening and Jerry's over the money and the product. I'm over to preaching and raising the money. I did my job. We get to the hotel. Jerry, I say, Jerry, how's the money? You got it? Well, I ain't got it. That ain't my job. My job was to get it. I got it. You're supposed to keep up with it. He goes, well, this must be in a suitcase. It ain't in that suitcase. Let's check that suitcase. It ain't in that suitcase, okay? Check your bag. It ain't in the bag. Check my bag. It ain't in my bag. I can tell you that right now. Unless you put it in there. Did you put something in my bag? No. Well, it ain't in my bag. It ain't in your bag. It ain't in that suitcase. It ain't in that suitcase. It ain't in this suitcase. Call the driver, the host. Maybe you left it in the car. Because you know we're praying. He is. Lord, let it be in that car. Lord, whatever you do, you, you transcend that thing. You remove that thing from wherever it is, and you put it in that car. That car drives up. We look all over the car, under the seat. We're under the thing. We're looking in the muffler. We lift up the hood. <laughs> Malaysian millionaire standing there, and Jerry says, By the devil! <laughs> Daddy, the devil is attacking us. And the Asian man said, ain't no devil. It's incompetence. Terry, I went. He said, it's, it's negligence. Wasn't the devil. It was your negligence and incompetence. You left the money in the business locked up 50,000 ring it and the bag was wide open money all in the seat just said take me take me take me now I'm telling you something spirit of the Lord left me <laughs> and the spirit of anger shall overtake thee I would I got I, I, I could taste how mad I was and the devil behind my back was my mind the devil was not helping Jerry out at all the devil was in my mind going you that you you really in debt now you done lost all the money you ten thousand dollars in the hole you, you got to pay for everybody's ticket <laughs> and his negligence did it and I'm about to lay out some now Jerry's over going no 
Oh, Lord. Oh, I could tell he's sick. I mean, the blood left his face. He, he, he didn't look like he could whoop anybody. He just whooped. I mean, and he looked like he just whooped you. All the Malaysian people say, he about a guy. He about a guy. Because he... All the Asians are looking at me and go, he big, he big, he a body guy. I said, Jerry, you should have been born here. You could have been a basketball player over here. He big, he me, he looked like he hurt somebody. Him and Daniel, don't bring them together. They'll do where to hurt you. And I could tell the blood left his face, and the Holy Ghost said to me, he said, what comes out of your mouth will live in his mind forever. I can replace your money, but I will not be able to replace your words. And I just begin to tell the Lord, I don't care. <laughs> or you thought I was going to say something spiritual? Bro, I said, I don't care. He got to pay. And I know he ain't got the money to pay it. So he fixing to get the butt chewing that's worth 50,000 rand. And the Holy Spirit said, this all happened in my mind like a split lightning. Words are doors, walls, and bridges. Words affect memory. Words affect feelings. Money is the result of work. Words are are a lifetime. Words are supernatural. Words are are satanic or or words are saviors. Uh, Whatever comes out of your mouth uh, makes the meaning of what it is. Is money more important than his mind? Is money more important than his soul? Is money more important than you? Is money? I could put money back in your pocket at any place at any time, but I would not be able to dig out any word that you said. And I turned to Jerry and I said, Son, and Jerry said, Daddy, take it out of my pay. I was thinking, I ain't paying you. <laughs> How much did you think you was getting paid? Good, good attempt, though. Then he said, Dad, Dad, it's my, it's my, it's my and I said, Son, Go to your room. Don't worry about it. It's only money. Divide. I could have attacked and subtract, but because I spiritually divided, I multiplied. So you can't possess. The number three is possess. He said, take it, divide it, then possess it. You know why you can't possess your future? Because you don't know how to manage what you took. Am I helping you? I go to church all the time. Well, you're not getting paid to go to church. If you were, some of you wouldn't even pay your bills because you don't come to church very well. I'd be a millionaire. I mean, what if God paid you for every time you showed up? Man, y'all be so faithful. There wouldn't be an empty seat in the house. We wouldn't even have to praise God. You'd come here with a smile on your face. I'm getting paid. <laughs> what if God said, every time I see you in church, I'm going to write you a $1,000 check. Man, you'd be sitting there. I'd have to say, back off. Y'all back off the stage. Let me preach a little bit. <laughs> We're here. Did God see me? You'd be waving. You wouldn't be praising. You'd be waving at God. I hear. So I said, go, go to your room. Don't worry about it. Let's believe God. It's, it's in that office. And then he walks to his room, and he got his head down. He's, he's sick. Raymond said, well, I hope the guy that comes in. I said, man, you shouldn't be telling me this. He said, I hope the guy that comes in don't take it. We need to believe God he don't take it. Well, who would know? I mean, this country's in financial. I mean, 50,000 ringgits is, is, is two years of their salary. I said, let's just believe God that. And I go to my room, and I'm trying to, I'm, I, got my, I got my faith intact. My son sees me. Didn't I say that to your son? We're just going to believe God, and God can replace money. I said all the right things. He gets to his room, and I opened my door. I done kicked over the coffee table. I threw my luggage, Bobby. I sling in my clothes. I jumped into bed. I'm like, son of a gun. I can't believe he left that money there. I said the right thing, but I'm talking right now. I got to pray. And the Lord said, look at you. Look at you. Look at you. What a faith believer. What, you think I'm impressed because you can say it in front of him? It's what you do in private that impresses me. 
not trying to help people, Pastor. Yeah, anybody can say things in front of people they need to be noticed. Uh, so Raymond's got a good word about you, and Jerry's feeling good, but look at you. That sounds like Dominic Alate. Look at you. Look at you in private. Look at you. You about to cuss. Now, you know the truth. I probably did cuss. Let me rephrase that. Look at you. You done cussed. I cussed in the elevator, to be honest with you. I ain't tell you what I said because it's under the blood. I done slung my briefcase on the couch. Can't believe that woman gave me that kind of son. Then I quoted Smokey and the Bandit. When I get home. And then he said, look at you. The real you shows up in private. And I thought you trusted me. I thought you thought that I could get you money any place you are. You look at your mouth and your posture and some of you walk around. Well, how's it going? I'm saved, delivered, but it ain't going too good. Uh, you know, pray for me. Pray for you. Pray for yourself. Look at you. He said, look at you. He said, you ain't, you but, and I was taking my Zequel. I take Zequel. You take Zequel. You sleep good. You sleep good. You don't sleep good. Well, let me give you a Zequel anointing. Father, give you, you got a dog. Don't talk about Bob like that. Bob ain't no dog. She just said she can't sleep good because she got a dog. His name's Bob. Come here, Bob. I envy people like Bobby. Bobby just falls asleep. It's the devil. I hate him. So I lay down in the bed, and, and I, I, I went to take a Zequel. And I'm going to the bed, and God said, you know, the way you're talking, you might need to take two. And I said, no, I'm taking one. I laid in the bed in my mind. Every scenario, you ever been there? Every scenario is being, am I trying to help you or what? Every scenario. And not one scenario playing in my mind was positive. Not one. Every scenario. First thing I thought of was the Muslim police was going to be there because that's a lot of money. I'm selling drugs. Thinking, my God, I've seen those movies in prison afar. I said, I couldn't survive in a, in a, in a nice prison, much less a far prison. I'm too pretty to go to jail. I ain't tough enough. Every scenario is playing. And I'm laying there, and the Holy Spirit said to me, if you don't control your mind, it's going to get the best of you. So I laid in bed. I said, Lord, I give it to you right now. He said, if you give it to me, then you have to stop thinking about it. He said, if you're thinking about it and you're evaluating it in your head, you haven't given anything to me. You're just using me as a security blanket in case you can't figure it out. You, you're trying to figure it out. You're trying to write the scenario, see if you can solve it before I can get involved in it. Then when you can't solve it, then you will let me have it. But why don't you try this? Give it to me before you can solve it. Why? Because you're my child. I sent you to Malaysia. You think I'm going to send you here to go in the hole? You don't do anything for me that I don't reward you on your faith. You divide incorrectly. You're managing your spirit incorrectly. You can't possess anything until you manage correctly. So I said, I'm going to sleep. I slept like a baby. I slept like a rock. Open my eyes. I, did, I said, God, I ain't even going to think about it. I'm going to get up and praise you. And I said, and I, and I have my friend Clint Brown. I have all his songs on my playlist because he moves me. I don't just listen to music unless it moves my spirit. I don't listen to anything that don't move my spirit. I don't care about moving my mind, move my spirit. 
praise moves my spirit. Worship moves my spirit. And I, and I got up and, and I was listening to that song. Oh, Lord, I praise you. When the sun refuses to shine. We sang it this morning. I got up singing it this morning. When the sun refuses. How's it go? When the sun. How's it go? When the sun. Sun says I won't oh, rise. When I, if the sun says I won't rise. And dark clouds fill my sky. That's what's playing in my room in Malaysia. The Lord, just know that, that I, I will always give you praise. And when trouble's on the, the way, way, I will always Grace. say, no matter come what may. I'll always give you praise. And I said this. Lord, I praise you. I don't worry about that money. You know why? You got a king. Lord, I glorify Refine your, your name. name. I dare you to sing it. Lord, I praise you. One more time, I got to go. And when if the sun says I, I won't rise, who, who going who gonna let me close this out with a little praise? I'll tell you the end here in two seconds. Lord, just, just know, know that, that I'm ready. I will always give you praise. I, I, want, I want to hear you now. And when trouble's on the way, I will always say. Lift your hands and just do it with her. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I glorify your name. Lord, I praise you. Let it go. A new year is coming. Let it go. Let it go. Is he not God over everything? Because if the sun said I won't rise, oh, and dark clouds fill my skies, Lord, just know that I will always give you praise. And when trouble's on the way, or dry up in Robert. I will always say, oh, bless the listen. No matter come what may, I'll always say, I, 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 I gotta close this, but I wanna hear you. Lord, I praise you. That song on my iPhone. You know what I found out about God? He's God everywhere. Yes. He ain't just God in America. He's God in Malaysia. He's God in England. Let me just add you something. I got to go. I started out the trip with a thousand, ten, one hundred dollar bills in my briefcase, in my backpack. I brought it extra. I went and got it out of my safe. I was going to spend it on Jerry. I said, I'm going to go shopping. We're going to go shopping, and, you know, I'm gonna, I'm, my, my son's with me. I'm going to make it a, 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 a memory. When I got to Malaysia and I go to get the money, somebody stole the money on the plane. That's the first day. $1,000. Imagine a 1000 bucks gone right out your bag. And now I'm ending the trip with 50000 Bring it. Gone. And the devil's laughing. But when you hear the devil laughing in your now, 
you ought to start listening for God's laughter in your next. We got up and I got in the car and I said, Raymond Tay, take us to the place, that money bag. Let's go get it. Me and Jay ride up in there and he pulls up and we get out, Randy, and we go up in there and there sits an, a, a Hindu, an Indian. Got his, did he have his wrap on, Jerry? Did he have his wrap on his head? And I walk in there and Jerry's right with me, wasn't you, buddy? And I said, anybody leave something in this store? Last night, and the guy reached up and he pulls out my money bag. And you know what he said? This is negligence. This is incompetence. And then he said, This is negligence. You don't leave this kind of money laying around in Malaysia. I grabbed it and zipped it up because I knew you was coming to get it. Duh. Who's going to leave it? Look. He hands it back to me. I'm thanking him. I reach in and I get a couple of 300, bring it, 300 of their dollars. And I go to give. I say, here, let me, I want to bless you. And I went to hand it to him. You know what he said to me? You will not pay me for my integrity. Hey, that, that, that Hindu got more Christian than Christian. You will not pay me for my integrity. That is my character. It is not for sale. Did me? I said, oh, no, no, no. You misinterpret me. I am not giving you money because you kept my money. I'm giving you money to tell you that my God wants to bless you. Who's your God? Well, it ain't Hinduism. It ain't Judaism. It's kingdom. And I ended up telling them about my king. And all that money was for my king. I ministered to the Hindu. And then God said, even in your negligence, I can turn this thing in my favor. I used your negligence to get a word to an Indian who kept your money. You know why? Because he was willing to keep my money. He divided my stuffs correctly even though he wasn't a Christian. He took it off that seat but he managed it correctly. So God gave him a word of possession. Take it Divide it so you can possess it. Say it three times, I'll let you go home. I'm going to take it, but I'm going to divide it so I can. Say it one more time. Ready? I'm going to. I'm going to. And I'm so I can. All right, high five. Five people tell me you're going to possess the land because you know how to take the land. Listen, don't, don't, don't. Try to rewrite your theology to accommodate your tragedies. Get lined up in the Word of God. Amen? Stand to your feet. Hug somebody. I don't care what time it is. I ain't going to apologize. Tell you, I'm sorry I went so long. You needed it. I hope you received it. If you're watching, get ready. Take it. Manage it so you can possess it. Possession means you got to drive out all the inhabitants. God wants you to possess, but he ain't going to let you possess what you cannot manage. And you're never going to manage it if you don't know how to take it, okay? I love you guys. Listen, be on Morning Motivation tomorrow. We're going to deal with depression. Depression. Tell everybody, if you're fighting depression, we're going to spend all week on healing depression on Morning Motivation. And you can watch replay if you miss it live at 9 a.m. I love you guys. Talk to you later. Hey, guys, take us away.